Hello guys, and welcome to our first podcast. My name is Sean from Shire's Adventures. You are now listening to a new podcast from our Forgotten Legends series. Today, I will take you on a journey to my beloved and marvelous New Zealand, where I've lived for 15 years. If you were to arrive at Auckland Airport, you will see a lot of pictures and art depicting Maori culture. Who are the Maori? The Maori are the indigenous Polynesian people of New Zealand. They came to New Zealand in the early to mid 1300s from Eastern Polynesia. Today, one in seven New Zealanders identify as Maori. Over several centuries in isolation, these settlers developed their own distinctive culture whose language, mythology, crafts, and performing arts evolved independently from those of other Eastern Polynesian cultures. Their history, language, and tradition are central to New Zealand's identity. The main character in this tale is the legendary Maui. You may have been introduced to Maui before in the Moana or Viana Disney movies voiced by the famous actor Dwayne Johnson, better known as The Rock. In the movie, Maui was a mischievous character and is in fact associated with the origins of New Zealand. When Maui was born, his mother, the goddess Taranga, wrapped him in a length of her hair and threw him into the ocean, where he was raised by ocean spirits. In the ensuing years, these spirits cared for Maui, hiding him in the sea coral and kelp until one day, following a fierce storm, Maui was washed into the beach. There on the shoreline, his ancestor named Tamanui Arangi retrieved him and brought him back from the brink of death. He also educated Maui in the ways of the world. Later, Maui wandered into his mother's village on the mystical island of Hawaii, and his brothers recognized him. His mother, however, didn't remember who he was, not until Maui reminded her of the circumstances of his birth. Maui had four older brothers. Maui dreamed of the day that he could go fishing with them. Whenever they returned from a fishing trip, Maui would ask if he could go on the next trip, but they always came up with an excuse like, you are too young to come fishing with us, and we need all the space in our waka for all the fish we plan to catch. Now a waka is a canoe. While Maui was with the ocean spirits, he was given an enchanted jawbone of one of his ancestors that he used to carve a magical fish hook from. So one day, Maui was so determined to go out fishing with his brothers that he secretly devised a plan to prove he was a great fisherman. One night, when Maui was alone, he began weaving a strong fishing line while reciting an old karakai to give his fishing line strength, a karakai being a chant or a prayer. When he was finished, Maui took out his magic fish hook and secured it to the line. Early the next morning, Maui took his fishing line and hid it in a fish basket in his brother's waka. When Maui's brothers pulled the waka into the sea the morning, they complained about how much heavier it was, but they headed out and over the waves to where the waters were full of sea life. When Maui heard the anchor drop, he knew they were too far out to return to the land and decided to reveal himself. When Maui climbed out of the basket, his brothers were surprised and furious, and they even threatened to return to the shore. But Maui spoke up and said, I have come to fish with you because Mirirangi Fenua came to me and said I would be a great fisherman. Let your lines down, and I will recite my kerakai, and you'll catch more fish than you ever have. So the brothers tossed their lines into the water and in a flash started getting fish. One after another they pulled their fish into the waka. In no time the waka was full 
and the brothers were pleased with their catch, and they congratulated each other. Now it's my turn to fish, said Maui, and the brothers laughed when he pulled his fishing line out of his bag. One of them teased, saying, Ha! You'll be lucky to catch a piece of seaweed with that. And then another said, Maybe you could catch a piece of driftwood and float home on it. The brothers couldn't stop laughing, but Maui didn't listen. Instead, he got his line ready and asked his brothers for some bait for his hook. But the brothers started to laugh even harder. So Maui clenched his fist and punched himself hard on the nose. His nose began to bleed and Maui covered his enchanted hook with his own blood. Then he stood at the front of the waka and launched his line into the ocean. Deeper and deeper the line dropped and then all of a sudden Maui felt a powerful tug on his line. The tug was so strong that Maui was afraid that he would be pulled under and the waka began to rock fiercely. His brothers held on to the sides of the waka so they would not be thrown into the ocean. Cut the line, Maui, or we will all drown, called his brothers. But Maui held on tight to his line. Slowly, a giant fish began to be pulled up, and his brothers gathered around him. The fish was gargantuan, and it towered over the small waka. Maui then said to his brothers, Guard our fish and I will soon return with our people. The brothers agreed, and Maui headed back to Hawaii. But as soon as Maui left, his greedy brothers began hacking at the fish and claiming what parts would be theirs. When Maui returned with his people, they were amazed to see the monstrous fish. And they saw that the four greedy brothers were still chopping and arguing over the fish. They were so greedy that they carved valleys and hills all through the fish. This monstrous fish would later be known as the North Island of Aotearoa, New Zealand, and is also known as Tiika a Maui, or Maui's fish. The South Island is said to be the canoe that Maui and his brothers fished from, and is also known as Tiwaka a Maui. Maui's canoe. Stewart Island, on the southern tip of New Zealand, is believed to be the anchor from the canoe and is named Tipunga a Maui. Maui's anchor stone. This concludes this podcast. We hope you enjoy this legend and hope to see you for the next one in our Forgotten Legends series.